Our next candidate is, is Susanna Nordoff. Susanna, you have two minutes to introduce yourself. Thank you. I appreciate the League of Women Voters giving us this opportunity. I'd like to earn your support for my council run. And um, I believe that I have the qualifications to do a good job on the city council. I moved down here in 2005 to work for Stunster Engineering and Forestry as a civil engineer. So I've worked on a number of projects around town. And uh, in particular, I remember working on the Oak Street ball fields for the North Bend School District. There are two soccer and two softball fields uh, that I worked on for some time. And uh, it's really fun to drive by and see those fields completed and in use. I am all for the public infrastructure in particular, um, supporting the road improvement plan that has been studied with an engineering plan already in terms of priorities, what the city needs to do to move forward. Since I moved down here, um, I've been involved in several organizations. I was on the Coos Watershed Association board for four years. I was on the North Bend Parks Advisory Board also for three or four years. And I was president of the Southwest chapter of the Professional Engineers of Oregon in 2010 when we secured 20 speakers and held the state conference for 200 engineers at the Mill Casino Hotel. My, um, I worked with Ralph Dunham, our public works director on that conference and it, it went over very well. Um, I own property in Gardner and I am in my sixth year of serving on the Gardner Sanitary District Board of Directors through five budget cycles and two major construction projects. I also was elected to a two-year seat on the Gardner Fire Board, and I have brought in four grants for supporting those two districts with infrastructure. I would like to say that I'm not a single addition, a, a one, a one, um, one topic candidate or one, I have an interest in supporting the city as a whole in working on the public infrastructure in doing what the city can do to, for, to support the local economy. And I would really appreciate your vote and support. Thank you very much. Okay. okay, our first question, how would you improve communication between the city government and its citizens? Oh my goodness, sure. I guess I would start off with that I think that things that are very important that the council works on during a public meeting, um, those, those issues that sometimes receive votes, um, there are several issues that received votes on the council that were not on the agenda. And an ex as an example, I'll say that the uh, February 2019 vote to add the $15 fee onto, for public safety onto the water bill that was um, put to a vote under other business. It did not appear on the agenda that night. And I believe that um, that's a disservice to the, to the citizens of the city, not knowing what the council is going to, to vote on. Um, I would think that uh, things like the, the vote to take down the, the trees in Simpson Park, that needed to be brought to the council so that citizens could become aware of it. That, that actually was not brought to council until the third meeting after the parks board meeting. It should have come to the council and been included in the council minutes at the very following meeting, uh, council meeting following the parks board meeting and vote uh, to take down the trees. So there can be some very concrete steps taken that, that aren't difficult in order to improve communications. I also think that um, the newsletters, continuing the newsletters twice a year are a good thing. I've certainly paid attention to what the developments are. And I use the website, uh, the city website extensively and I have found it to be very helpful. And it just went through, I believe, a kind of a revamping here recently and I'm still kind of finding my way around, but I think it's, I think it's been well maintained and I'm usually successful when I go looking for information. That's my, that's my thoughts on that. Thank you. Um, the next question, what should be the city's approach 
to the problem of the unhoused. I believe that it is an increasing problem. I believe that there isn't enough housing in the community for all the people who need housing. And I believe that um, some, of the, some of the areas that are zoned for multifamily residential could be developed into multifamily residential, meaning fourplexes or, or apartment buildings. I believe that the, I'm not quite sure, and I haven't studied this in depth, but I'm a little nervous that um, taking housing out of the rental stock and, and um, ha having so many Airbnb or short-term rentals of housing is, is it, it, it's just a fact. It's decreasing the amount that are available for local families to rent. I think that we could also encourage I think that there, there has to be some thought to helping the police department and in their interactions with the homeless community because they are bearing the, the burden of most of the interactions and it's, it's not fair to the police to, to um, expect them to handle that without a lot of support. So I think it's definitely a complicated issue and one that would take a lot of study and, and careful discussion and involving um, mental health counseling, whatever we can do to, to both provide housing and, and also uh, support the police force who are the ones who mostly interact with, with the homeless. Good. Next. Um, the next question, given the continuing crisis of global climate change, what would be your approach to protecting the environment? I believe in climate change. I think we're seeing it more and more, um, especially with the intensity of the storms and the, the uh, king tides and where it's coming up right up to touching the, the, the bridge over Pony Creek. It's kind of uh, scary. And in terms of protecting the environment, I think in terms of what the city can do, the city could look at um, making sure that our buildings are insulated as much as possible, that our, our heating sources are such, maybe we could uh, improve and decrease our, our um, power usage by doing solar um, power on top of our buildings, perhaps. Uh, it's all a, a question of, of uh, long-term you know, payment. It takes a while to, to pay off the investment in the infrastructure, but at the same time, any improvement you make really has a payback in terms of the less power that you use. I think that we, we I know that we are on the end of the electrical grid and we see a lot of drops in our, our power. That, isn't so much an environmental question, it's just a fact of life. Um, I think that in terms of saving trees, we can certainly have, we need to take a good look at our, at our the, the property that the city owns that is um, being overrun with ivy because uh, we stand to lose our forest just from the, the overgrowth of this invasive, invasive species of ivy. And that doesn't help the environment if we don't protect our trees. Um, in terms of preparing for the intensity of storms, I think we need to definitely um, be conscious of, of stormwater runoff and the city infrastructure to handle that. I think that um, the more we can do to, to make our city count in terms of our energy usage and decrease that energy uses that is to our benefit and it's to the environment's benefit. Okay, time. Um, last question, is there waste in the city budget? If so, where would you make cuts and why? All right, 
I believe that there may be some waste in the city budget. I'm aware of at least one um, consulting contract that has been um, given to a former uh, manager in one of the departments after he retired. And I'm not sure that that is warranted. So I think that that should should be looked at real carefully when the new council takes over. I do not think that we should be keeping former department managers on as consultants. I think it's, I think we can't afford it. We just can't, that's, that's gravy. We can't afford gravy at this point. I believe that, um, let me think here a moment, I had another thought. I think that when um, I heard recently of a contractor who was um, retained by the city to do a job and they went 40% over their, the amount that, that they stated that they would do the work for. And it came in and the city was asked to go ahead and award the 40% over, over cost. And, this, and the council did it. They approved it without, it without any questions about it. And I don't think that's appropriate. I don't think that's appropriate at all. You know, you bid a job, you, it's your risk to finish that job and you shouldn't be coming back saying, well, we ran over and so therefore you owe us another whatever it was. That kind of thing is not appropriate. And I think the city's gonna have to uh, be a little um, tighter fisted than, than it has been in the past. Um, other, other sources uh, where there might be more than enough money. I think that we could look at, at um, the urban renewal district in terms of uh, possibly winding that down without taking on more major projects because once that is uh, wrapped up and the maximum indebtedness is concluded and paid off, um, then every single taxing district uh, over the properties that are within the urban district boundary will see a jump in taxes since 1994. So that's a lot of, of increases. And um, I believe that right now there's between Hi. five and six. Okay. There's about five and to six hundred six hundred thousand dollars that come into the UR district every year to the budget. So there would be that much more once that, that money, uh, once the district is closed out. Okay, well you have one minute to wind up to tell us anything you want to. I would like to ask for people's support for uh, my council run. I believe I'm qualified to sit. I, it's not my first elected uh, office. I have uh, served on boards before Elect, as an elected official. I believe that the city has some challenges and uh, with knowing the, knowing the issues a little bit better and reaching out to, to get people's input, which I think is very important, I think that the, the council as a whole can overcome these issues and address the, the public safety issue, the budget issue, and the roads and the, the local economy doing what the city can do to support the local economy. And hand in hand with that is, is the housing issue, uh, trying to address that and support our, our, local, our local residents. We really, we really need to not turn a blind eye to it. Thank you very much.